folks, after all these years of collecting antique garden tractors and whatnot, I finally came into some economies. I haven't had one of these before because the prices are always very high up around here when people are selling them and whenever you see them for sale. But a couple of few weeks ago, I pulled home three of them. This one here is a 1956 economy, has a 24 inch rear rims on it and a homemade loader, which is kind of rickety, but it's kind of neat the way that somebody designed it. I also ended up with a 1958 Country Squire that was painted green and yellow to look like a John Deere and a 1962 Economy with the original deck on it. So I got a pretty fair deal on the tractors, but they are pretty well wiped. This one's pretty beat up, definitely because it had the loader on it. The front end is very worn out, steering box is loose, the steering wheel has been fixed a number of times as you can see. But out of all of them, this is the one that I'm going to be keeping, mainly because it's a high wheel model, which I've always wanted. And the, the loader makes it kind of unique also, and I do have the bucket for it. But today we're going to be doing an engine swap on it, that way I can get the thing running and driving, because it's been sitting out in the backyard for a couple of weeks now, and i got to get the thing moved. Somebody had swapped in a Synchro Balance 16 horse Briggs & Stratton into it, and there's something wrong internally because the points aren't moving like they should when you roll it over and it's very stiff to turn over too so I think it's got some problems and rather than delve into it I found out that a K301 Kohler with the right bolt hole pattern on the back of it will fit into these bell housings and I just so happen to have one in stock so we're going to be getting that running and getting that swapped onto here and then we can finally take this thing for a drive and if I get ambitious enough see if I can get these hydraulics squared away and get the loader on this thing and see what it'll do once we get the pump hooked up but the first thing we have to do though is get this Briggs unbolted get this thing out of here and I'm just gonna do a dry fit of the collar to make sure it fits and it's gonna work in here if it does we'll start tearing into that collar and getting the thing running now with any luck all my clutch components will be good inside of here because I don't have any spare stuff sitting around for economies but the best part about change, changing this engine out and getting it off is someone's already been here before and as you can see hopefully you can see that move this pulley here for the flywheel for the clutch is loose on the engine shaft and that's usually the most difficult point on swapping these engines over on the economies is trying to get that flywheel off of the shaft So what I'm going to do to split this engine is I'm going to try to split it from where the bell housing mounts up to the block instead of up here where it mounts to the clutch housing, I guess you'd call it, where the bolts go around. Because that's usually where I pull them apart from. But since this pulley or the clutch flywheel is loose on the shaft, I might as well see if I can get it to move from here first. Now I just have to get the engine out of here. And it is an inch and an eighth shaft, and that's what the Kohler has on it, so I know that's good. And if I'm not mistaken, the bolt pattern for this housing is still the same, too, on the Kohler, which would be nice. There's really no easy way to do this. That was probably one of the easiest engines I've ever pulled out of economy. Usually you end up having to heat these flywheels up and beat them into submission just to get them off the back of the engine shaft. But I was looking at this, obviously someone's never seized the heck out of it because it's all over the place, which is 
obviously a good thing because it made this come off a lot easier. I think someone also redid the clutch in this too. As you can see, really without the flashlight better, you have the lining, then the clutch plate, and the other side of the lining on the other side of the clutch plate. And it's pretty darn thick, so I think someone might have done the clutch in this too at one point when they had the engine apart. I don't know. But the splines look pretty fair inside of the clutch, and they also look, where is it, fairly decent on the shaft coming out of the transmission. The throwout bearing, I stuffed my hand in there. That still spins all right. So I'm just going to grease this instead of never seize it this time. Give it a little bit of lubrication, and then we'll be ready to put the other engine back onto here. So this here is going to be our donor engine for this thing. This is a 12 horse color K301. Serial number puts it at a 1977. Probably came off a Gravely 812 or something of the like. Maybe an early 8000 series. But the carburetor is not on it. Still has the original old style fuel pump and all that. It does have the old the Gravely style muffler. Which if it fits with the bell housing coming around the side over here. I want to leave this because that will probably work out pretty slick because the piston should just miss the outlet. So that'll work out nice. But this does have the inch and an eighth shaft on the back of it. I already pulled the adapter plate off and the holes do line up with the corresponding bolt holes on the bell housing on the economy. So the first thing I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna take this outside, pull these shrouds off and then blow all the mouse crap out of it because there's a nest in it that's keeping me from turning it over. And then once we get it to turn over, hopefully it's got some compression, if so, We'll come up with a good carburetor for it, get blow it off in the glass bead blaster, and get that rebuilt. Been sitting in there for quite some time now. Unfortunately, it didn't do the shroud any good either. But I think if we're careful with it, we can keep it from coming apart, and this one will do for now. Kohler is all blown off and cleaned up for the most part. One thing that I do want to do to this is, as you can see, the stator wires come out the carburetor side of the engine. I am going to pull the flywheel off, pull the stator off just enough so I can get these wires out. And I'm going to feed them through the other side here where the starter comes out. Because I am going to have to rig up somewhat of an electrical system on this tractor because this is an electric start engine. And I'd rather have these sticking out the other side where it's got less stuff and it's a little less busy with the fuel pump and the carburetor and all that. I also got to pull this fuel pump off and split it apart, make sure everything's okay inside. As for the carburetor, I had a bunch of rebuilt ones that I already bead blasted in the drawer. So I've got a Carter model in here, number 26, which is the correct one for a Kohler 12 horse. So rather than spend time rebuilding another carburetor, we're just going to put that one on it to save me a little bit of time. So I'm gonna get this Kohler squared away. If there's anything real significant, I'll check back with you folks. But you've seen me do this 100 times, so the main thing I wanted to do was get the engine swap and get this thing going. That was the main part of this film. So I get this Kohler taken care of, and I'll check back with you guys in a few. Well, the Kohler is all ready to fire up. So I got everything back onto it. The engine shroud's on there. The, Kohler, the stator wires are sticking out the other side. I also got the carburetor rebuilt for it. The one that I had pulled out of the drawer that was already rebuilt didn't have the little ball on the top of it for my linkage, and I didn't have any of these linkages with the ball on it. So I found another carburetor that was pretty clean on the inside. It actually looked like this for the most part. Somebody had already cleaned the body up. So I just put the components into it, and that worked out pretty slick. The fuel pump I pulled off of there it's making sucking noises and I can feel it pulling up against my finger when I put it over the inlet. So luckily enough, it's a good original fuel pump too. I also swapped out the points with a good use set that I had on hand. So we should have a good spark. And as for the spark plug, I'm just gonna take a bet that it still works because I could barely get it to turn and I'd rather not strip out the threads if I don't have to for the time being. So we're going to get this out onto the welding bench outside, we'll rig up our test tank, get our battery charger out, and see if we can get this sucker to fire up.
And we got ourselves a good running color, folks. So while that's sitting out on the bench cooling down, because it's a nice chilly 36 degrees here this evening, I figure on what I'm going to do is I'm going to start rigging up some stuff for an electric start. Somebody had put a battery box up here for a battery. It comes a little bit close to the steering wheel, this battery I got here, but it's doable for the time. And I think I'm just going to keep this a very simple system. I'm probably going to end up using a Gravely starter button for the starter system, just to keep it real simple without a key or anything like that. Either a toggle switch or a key switch to shut the thing down, and then I just got to figure in for wiring a voltage regulator onto this thing for a charging system. But I'm not worried about the voltage regulator now. That can always come on down the road. So I'm going to start rounding up some parts for that. I also got to see if I can get another bolt through the steering box bracket down below. Somebody ran a quarter 20 straight through the frame, but it's a crappy bolt. So I'm going to pull that out and put another one in. What it really needs is to get re-welded, but I'm not going to pull the welder out tonight to do it. I also have to see if I can get this street elbow that has snapped off of the piston at one time or another, get it out of the piston in here. So I have to get it easy out into that. And I also figured out why this thing was really stiff turning over once I put the flywheel back on. It's definitely pretty stiff. It wasn't the Briggs and Stratton, but it was what was inside of the little transmission. As you can see, the majority of it was all water mixed in with the gear oil. So it was some pretty nasty stuff. So I just dumped that out of there and I got some used gear oil to put into that. So that way when we start it, it can flush everything through and get everything moving again and I can dump it and then put some good stuff in there and hopefully that'll free everything up. I haven't checked the differential or the final drives in the back yet, but we'll get to those at some point. The hydraulic line is all squared away. I was able to get the old fitting out of the hydraulic cylinder with an easy out. It actually came out fairly easy, surprisingly enough. I figured it would be wound in there pretty tight. So that's taken care of. I got my used oil into the transmission, so that's all set. I also started to get the belt squared away for the hydraulic pump down below. As you can see, it has it's suspended underneath in the middle of the frame. So I got one belt to line up with everything and I got the mount loosened up. So once the engine is in here and running and I know everything drives all right, I'll hook up the belt for the hydraulic system and then I can see about getting this loader working. But right now comes the fun part is lifting the Kohler over the arms of this loader and dropping it in here to get everything ready to bolt up because they're significantly more heavy than the Briggs that came out of here. I can tell you that right now. Luckily the welding bench is about chest height when I grab the engine so I can walk it right in and put it on this bar. So now all I have to do is get that shaft greased up, get the keyway in it, and then we can see about slipping that and the flywheel together. Engine's going on a little bit tight, but I ran into some other problems. As you can see, the mounting plate for the ears is way off. We're actually closer to that side than we are over here, which that's an easy enough fix. All I gotta do is stuff a pry bar against the transmission and move it over, because everything right now is just all lined up with this tube, and if they welded the flanges on the end of it just a little crooked, it'll move everything over a little bit. So that's easy enough, but I am going to have to take the bolt out of here where the stabilizer arms come down for the loader. Once the engine is bolted up, put a jack underneath this and then move this plate forward. Mark the hole, drill another hole because these collars sit further forward than the Briggs plates do. Oil pans, that is. So that's going to have to get done, and also I can't get this thing to clutch either the way it is right now, even though I don't have it bolted up all the way. It's tight enough where it should be clutching, and I had to pedal down as far as I could get it. So more than likely, the clutch is stuck against the pressure plate, and that's going to have to get freed up. So, like I should have done in the first place, 
Should have pulled the bell housing off from here when I did it. That way I could split the clutch apart and make sure everything checks out. So I'm going to pull this engine out and I can rest it right on the front here. And then we're going to see about getting this bell housing off and taking a look at that clutch. These aren't even really that tight in the first place. Alright, all the bolts are out of the pressure plate. And of course it doesn't help that these fingers, especially this one, is pretty well worn as you can see on the end, but that's not gonna make too much of a difference. And you can see where it was setting for a while because it's got rust marks from moisture. It was definitely a stuck clutch. So I'll have to get that surface cleaned up some. Clutch doesn't look too bad actually. There's plenty of life left before it hits the rivets and it's not like this is gonna be a heavily used machine anyways aside from running it every once in a while and taking it to some shows so now we just got to get this clean back up and we can throw this back together again and that's going to be about as good as it's going to get folks i didn't want to tear into this with any sandpaper to really mar it up too bad but i got all the heavy rust off of it well it wasn't all too heavy so cleaned off pretty nicely clutch cleaned up well and of course the flywheel is clean this thing i don't want to go too hard on it because it's actually I don't think it's, no, it might pick it up. You can see it almost looks like a record with all the little lines and circles going around it. So I don't want to take off any of that because that gives the clutch something to grab against too. But everything's all cleaned up. It's fairly smooth again. It's good enough for what the tractor will be doing. So now I just got to bolt this back together and then we can put everything back together and try again and see what happens. So just as a side note to you folks, when you're working on these economies and you're putting the clutch back together and the bell housing is off, if you don't have one of these clutch tools that you use for lining up the disc along with the pilot bushing right here, because what you do is you slide this in through and it lines up the pilot bushing and the spline on the clutch disc. That way when you go to slide your transmission into it or your clutch onto your transmission shaft, you don't have to worry about unbolting the pressure plate, getting the clutch to move a little bit so everything lines up. So what I did is I found out there's enough room with the bell housing off where I can just set my bolts in on the pressure plate into the flywheel, a couple of threads, and the clutch is still loose, as you can see, because the pressure plate isn't grabbing it too much right now. But I was able to slide it onto the end of the shaft of the transmission, so it's sitting in my pilot bushing, the spline is inside of my clutch shaft, so everything's lined up the way it should be, and all I have to do is turn this and go around it with a wrench, tighten up my bolts, and everything will be where it should when it has to come time to slide it in. Start and reassembly of the clutch now. I'm putting everything onto the engine, bell housing first, then the clutch, and then everything will slide onto the stub shaft for the transmission, which is really how it should go back together instead of vice versa. Now down inside of here, you can see that there's two little plates tabs on each side of the throw out bearing and these ears on the throw out bearing ride against the tabs which keeps the throw out bearing from spinning when you push it back or when you push the pedal down and it pushes into the fingers on the pressure plate well it was spun a little bit and it wasn't sitting on the tabs when I pulled everything apart so after looking stuff over I remember that there was a snap ring that goes down inside of these things as you can see it's in the groove now <clears throat> there was two of these the curly Q snap rings like this and they were pushed all the way against the pilot bushing all the way up to the front so this flywheel was actually sitting too far back on the engine shaft which made the pedal for the clutch end up running out of room because you'd have to push it so far down to get clutch because this thing was sitting too far back on the engine shaft but i got the snap ring in the groove now where it should be so now i can finish reassembling this and get it mounted on the engine well, that's where we're going to dock it for now, folks. This is becoming to be a little bit more involved of a project than I figured, so I'm going to turn this into a two-part series instead just to keep the video time down to a reasonable amount. So check back within the next five days, and I'll have part two uploaded. And until then, there you have it.